somebody out here or somebody online the Lord was saying to me as we were worshipping that you are anxious about I don't know if it's a son or a daughter but you are anxious about the future but I hear the spirit of the Lord is saying to you I've got him or her you don't need to have sleepless nights I got him or her covered. So don't be anxious about it. Just, you've already made your request known to me, says the Lord. Just trust me. I'm already at work with that daughter of yours, husband, wife, child, whatever. I don't know who you are, but I'm saying God is saying, Slablik. I've got you. I've got him. I've got her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may take your seats. Thank you. Kasatala Boshata. Oh, Rakasetele Boshata. Isn't there a wonderful atmosphere? Ek weet ons wil sama ons al heel dag wil worship. Van is mos likke. But thank God for His Word. Allow me to greet you. Amen. Wow. First of all, I want to thank Pastor Dane and Tessa for this opportunity to share God's Word with you this morning. It's an opportunity that I do not take up lightly. I was saying to somebody yesterday that mentality, because people don't understand People think it's easy just to come up here, Brother Jeremiah, and say <laughs> what you think you need to say. I was saying is that because God is entrusting us with your future. So I cannot just come up here and say a few things and just because I, I know how to do it. I don't want to do that. There was just 
when it was on Thursday night at worship practice, I was looking at, I was looking at the band. I was sitting there, and I was just looking at the guys and the way they were playing and the gift that God has given, graced them with. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, I want to say to Ethan Thandu, Eddie, Curtis, Grant, in the absence of Roche that is not here, that you are here. This is what I heard the Lord say to me, Pastor T. Guys, you are here not just because you are here. God was saying to me to say to you guys, this journey is part of God's plan for your future. Now, I don't hear a word what I've seen. You are here because this is part of God's journey for you. You came with something else, but you've been asking the Lord, what, where, why, where do I fit in God? This is part of your journey. I've placed you here because it's part of His journey, what He has in store for you. So, yeah, praise the year. I was sharing that with Jada when I came home. Jada said, Daniel, we are with the band praat. I said, I can not say what the year is for me. Because you guys, man, when I look at you, I, 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 I've got a, I want only iemand eight sondery. But you know, when, when Curtis came here for the first time, ja, ek praat van jou Curtis, you know how I see how Curtis started enjoying himself. He just like growing that gift. And I say to him, when you play the drums, it's just something. And you really bless me, my Buddha. Amen. Amen. But before I'm going to get into the word this morning, the Lord was saying to me, a lot of people get, they hear the word of the Lord. They get excited about the word that goes forth from the pulpit. Many hear, but they don't listen to what he said. they like people that look into the mirror and then they forget what they've heard, what they look like. They allow the enemy to rob them. I mean, I get many, get excited about the word. Your pastor, your, it was a bliss. Pastor Dane, it was awesome. But when the first challenge hits us, then we forget what has been said to us. There's a script in Hebrews chapter 2 that says, we need to pay most careful attention to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. This is not part of my message. (laughs) This is just something that the Holy Spirit said to me, I need to say to you. You need to pay close attention to the things you hear, lest you drift away. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17 says, Unlike so many, we do not peddle with the word of God for profit. The good news translation says this, Brother Harold. We're not like those that use the word as if it is cheap merchandise. The word of God is your life. And therefore it could not be taken lightly. Paul writes to the book of Thess- to the church of Thessalonica and he says to them, the reason why the word of God works in your life, because you did not receive it as a word from a man, but as a word from God. The reason why the word doesn't sometimes work in our lives is because we think it's just Dainvatistan. Uh, do, do, do you get what I'm saying? As yes, yes. What you don't respect, you won't attract. Wow. 
We say they are our pastors. I was saying to pastor then if people can just if they've paid close attention just to the series of the counterculture their life should be different. I think sister Tanya shared when she shared some now recently it's because many don't pay attention. We're just here to say okay I've been in church today but God has allow there to be church because it's part of your journey for what he has measured out for you. And he's raised up certain people to be able to do, to help you to get to that place where you need to be. So therefore when you, when, like I'm standing in front of you, forget about anything else. Just say, Lord, what are you saying to me this morning? Now, Pastor Dane has been sharing on the counter culture. Now, my theme for this morning is the culture of Christ. The culture of Christ. You can only counter the culture if you understand the culture of Christ. Come now, somebody. You can only counter something that you know what is the counter. The Bible says we are the light of the world, we're the salt of the earth. We are there to make a difference. Zayda got something posted up in a room. We're not here to fit in, but we are here to stand out. We need to be different. Amen. We need to. I don't know how many of you read Pastor Dane's um, post this morning. But the one thing that caught my attention was the last paragraph that says, if knowing the truth brings freedom, what do all these lies in our culture bring? The answer is simple. It brings bondage. Now to be able, when you understand the culture of Christ, you need to understand what is You first need to understand the culture of Christ. Where does Christ come from? He comes from heaven. And heaven has a culture. Amen. Amen. Heaven has a kingdom. It's it's called the kingdom of God. It's got a culture. And the prayer, the prayer that we have come to know, the Lord's prayer says, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I think Pastor Dane said last week, that's why some of us, just, I don't know why we just want to go to heaven. When God has placed us on this earth, so that his kingdom can come on this earth. And that's the reason why he sent Jesus to come and show us what the kingdom culture is in heaven. So that we can manifest it here on this earth. So we need to understand what is in heaven. I heard somebody say this morning and I'm like, oh, the person says, you you must bind on earth, then it will be bound. Yeah, I said, no. This has been broadcast, Pastor Den, on TV all over the world. And they don't, I think the enemy has got it wrong. The Bible says, the Amplified Bible says, you can only bound on earth what is already bound in heaven. If it's not bound in heaven, you cannot bind it on earth. And the reason why you can bind it on earth is because it's already bound in heaven. That's the culture. So it's very important that we understand what did Christ come to reveal to us. Now there's a few things that is in a culture or in a kingdom. A culture, then there's a constitution, how things should be run, and God has given us a constitution which is called the Word of God to guide us. There's citizens in the kingdom of God, there's a language in the kingdom of God. Alasemus was a scholar because it's a funny cup. That's how people, I mean, it's a culture. 
But you know, some of us believe so much that culture and it interferes with what God's plan is for our life. Because sometimes we think, but because I'm from, my color is different. So because I grew up in a certain way, it just has to be like that. But the devil is a liar. God has got much more in store than what we grew up with. Because what we grew up, if it doesn't mess with what God has in mind, what Jesus Christ came to reveal to us, then we are not living what God intended us to live. The Bible says in Matthew, he says, he says, we make his word of no effect because we're holding on to the culture that we grew up with. It's a culture that we, which is a good culture. But God is much more than you just coming to church. He wants your life to be transformed. Amen. Amen. So church is much more than just coming and praising and, and I'm going to get through now. God must answer my prayer. There's many times God answers your prayers whether you were in church and whether you were not in church. Why? Because He loves you. And what was amazing me that our church's name is called is Christ Culture. <laughs> and one of the things is that love and grace. And also that by you and grace will come. Now, one of the things is that they need, the kingdom needs citizens. God needs citizens on earth. Amen? He needs citizens. Now, I'm going to share some things this morning that oh, I know that we grew up in understanding a certain way of reading certain things. But I'm here to de- come to declare to you this morning that you are a kingdom citizen. Or let me rephrase that. You were born a kingdom citizen. (laughs) The Bible says in John 1 verse 12, and this is a very familiar portion of scripture. We grew up with this in church. To all those John 1 verse 11 says, He came, Jesus came to his own, but his own did not recognize him. (laughs) Jesus came to reveal to the people that you are a kingdom citizen. But the Bible says they didn't recognize it. Because they were so caught up that I'm a Jew, I'm a Gentile, I'm a Scythian, I'm that. And now the Bible says that to all those that has received him, to him he gave the right to become. Now that seems, Brother Harold, like, so I must first receive him before I can become. No, the Bible says before you were formed in your mother's womb. God already knew and approved of him. (laughs) Because we think it's my decision. That makes me a kingdom citizen. No, it wasn't. And it isn't. Because we need to look at what does the Greek say about that scripture? Because whenever the Bible is written, it is written in a, in a form, in a Jewish custom. It comes from a Jewish. Now that word become doesn't mean become. You have to look at it. It's, it's, it's a tense that says from the, you look at the end to the, big, to the start. The Bible says that You were formed in your mother's womb. And when were you formed in your Before you were formed in your mother's womb. God already had you in mind. God is in heaven, so you originally from heaven. We are not a product of our parents. We are a product of the Almighty God. 
You know, just any kind of a person. Say this so many. Sunni. Brainy garden village, brainy door, brave, I ever they blame. And that's why sometimes we think if I can go to Constanza, then it makes me feel good. No, you can feel good even if you stay wherever. Men in church is whatever, Maki Saki. Because why? Because you know where you come from. You are kingdom certain citizens. You have kingdom citizens. They say, I would what I'm also mean, second. Good luck, Jada. And, when do, and we think we receive it when we accept Jesus Christ. Now you've all been along. You've been a kingdom citizen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus just came to show you who you are. He came to introduce yourself to yourself. That's all he came to do. But the thing is, is that it's, can you see pastor? No, 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 it can't be. And the reason why we experience it not because we don't believe that, uh, that we are a kingdom citizen. Pastor Dane said something last week. He said, and I think he said it quite a couple of times in his series. He said, many of us, we are, we are kings, but we live like slaves. This was part of all the things that triggered all this. It's because we don't know that where we come from. We think I'm a parent's product. No, you are not. You are a product of the Almighty God. He had you in mind before your parents even thought about you. So you're not a mistake. And where you stay does not define you. What people say or think about you does not define you. <laughs> Paul comes, when Paul was arrested, in Acts chapter 22, verse 25 to 28, Paul was arrested um, for preaching the kingdom of God. And so they arrested him, and, and, and then Paul made a statement. He says to the, the gods, is it legal to persecute a citizen of Roman? And they say, Who? what? And the commander went to the chief and said, hey, this guy is a citizen of, a Roman citizen, and look what we've done with him. But then this, this commander came back to Paul and he said this to Paul, Brother Harold, he asked him this question. Did you pay for it? Paul says, no, I didn't. I was born. Paul says, no, I didn't pay for it. I was born a kingdom citizen, a Roman citizen. Pastor, what are you saying? You don't have to pay anything to be a kingdom. You were born. A kingdom citizen. You belong to the king of kings. So when I do say he's my king. I know what I'm singing about. I love when I read that. I said Paul says no. I didn't. That's what grace does. That's a revelation of grace. That says you don't have to do anything. You just have to believe that you are. Oh, Rabbi Kasita. I wonder what that, uh, uh, what that commander must have thought. Because he was bragging about it. And then Paul hit him for a six. Now, my bro, I was born for it. What am I saying? You don't have to do anything to be but to believe that you are a kingdom citizen. You're part of the kingdom. There's a song that Ron Canoli sings. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Now, I am a part of the kingdom. You see, what grace reveals is that we are. Religion wants to teach us, I must still make up my mind. So if you are here this morning, you still want to make up your mind. 
a still lot. It's too late because his mind has already made up who you are. That's why he sent Jesus. Come on, somebody. That's why he sent Jesus to the earth to show you that his mind is made up about you. And the only thing that you need is to hear the good news of Jesus Christ and say, I am. Not because I did something. Sister Natasha, did you have anything to do with your natural birth? Nothing. I can remember. I can remember. That's what she can sing, Pastor. She came with a shout. She had no part in it. She was just, yes, Jada. And she grew up, oh, there's Alistair, Teresa's my parents. What made her believe? Because she, 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 she grew up. And when we grew up, we have an enemy that wants us to believe that we belong to him. That we are his children. Come on, somebody. I said the devil can't make us beautiful children like you. You're not a child of the devil. The reason why Jesus made that statement, you are from the devil, because they believe the lie of the enemy. <laughs> You're a son and a daughter of the Most High God. Now Galatians 4 verse 7 1 to 7 is a very interesting. That's why I say we need to understand that I'm, I'm trying to let you understand that you are a child of God. You're a kingdom citizen. Because we have all this stuff that we grew up and said now the person thing asik of asik ni ek kom weer vandag sê jy is. And just like you have no contribution, now I'm going to say something that might just, just like you had no contribution towards your natural birth, you also have no contribution in being born again. Now, I'm going to get started. Because if that is so, then you have an issue to change your mind as well. What is amazing, we made a doctrine of being born again by one statement. An old man that visited Jesus in the middle of the night to ask him a question, how does the kingdom work? But Jesus was saying to him, unless I die, Unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom. What was Jesus saying? Unless I die and rose again, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Because Jesus came to restore what Adam messed up. That's why we still think it's our decision. Now the question is, when do I then become born again? (laughs) <laughs> Ooh, Jesus, hallelujah. Do you know how I fought with this thing years ago? 1 Peter 1 verse 3 says, We were born to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I know that it's a bit soft with many people. Because I know we also have a whole series open. Whole doctrine and good as book of what was But you see, God wants to make sure that you don't have any part. Because if you have part in it, then you can change your mind. Because what happens if you become born again and you backslide? Must he now die again and raise again? No. You can't become born again, born again, born again. It was a complete work. That's what the Bible says. We must confess Jesus Christ as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead. Because when you believe that God raised him from the dead, you believe that you were born again. 
Try me to figure. I wrote down here. It's amazing how we can believe that Adam's mistake influenced the whole human race. But we find it very hard to believe that what Jesus Christ came to do also came to affect the whole generation. No, it's easy because we have been so sin conscious. It seems like the devils got more right than what Jesus Christ got right. If Adam, what Adam messed up in the garden, influenced the whole generation until Jesus, if it could affect that whole generation, even before they were born, how much more? Come on, somebody. How much more the King of Kings, when he died and rose again, also did a whole, just, just gave born to a whole new generation. That's why Hosea says, can a nation be born in one day? That's why Jesus says, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, nor Scythian, nor Zulu, nor Kosa, nor Kalat, nor whatever. We all died in Christ. That's why we no longer look any man from a human point of view. It's amazing, Sister Tanya. Paul didn't mention once that people must become born again. <laughs> Not once. The only conversation that there was was between Jesus and Nicodemus that came in the middle of the night. Do you know why Paul never mentioned it? Because he knew what happened in Christ. The moment we believe it, it's manifesting. <laughs> I know a lot of people's doctrines is very dear. <laughs> you must be born again. And a person finds it very difficult. But can you imagine you go and tell him, but you are. <laughs> Because when Jesus died, you died. I don't know how many of you know what I, what I mean. is that in Christ is the pun code. That's where everything happened, in Christ. You were in Christ. So when he rose from the dead, you rose together with him. That's why Paul said, I rose with him. Now I know it, we, we found it very difficult to try to, because we also have to go to the book of there's some books, Brother Jeremiah, to it. when I came to this revelation, I realized there's some books that I had to get rid of. Because it's no longer bigger. But you know what I like about Paul? Paul says, I know you did that in ignorance, man. So don't feel bad. Paul said, that thing that I read that really blessed me this morning when I saw it. Because truth will set you free. The first song that we sang, um, I'm, thank God that I'm saved. No? When I heard it, I was standing in the back, and the weight came forth. You need to thank God that you were saved from what? We focus so much on that God saved us from hell. God saved us from the lie of the pit of hell. Yeah. Because the enemy deceived Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden by telling them, you, if you want to be like God, then eat. But just Genesis 1.26, it says before that they were made in the image and in the likeness of God. So the enemy wants you to believe that there's vetting. There's next vetting. But I'm here to declare that you were worth the blood of Jesus. Like I said, we need to understand what is the culture of Christ. And you have to, to be able to connect with the culture, you have to first need to understand that I am a citizen. That's why Peter says, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We are. He didn't say, you will become. You are. But you see, the thing is, it's because we in the church, we say, saved, ni saved. 
and we bring the vision. That's why John, Acts chapter 10 verse 10 says, when, when Peter was sitting on the roof and um, he had a vision from heaven with all the unsplit animals and, and, the, and the voice says to him, Peter, kill it. And Peter says, no ways. Because in that time, Jews and Gentiles didn't mix with each other. I had never, nothing unclean will come from my mouth. And the, spirit, the, the voice of God said to him, who are you to call unclean? Which I've already cleansed. Amen. Hey. Amen. <laughs> That's why I'm with all these who are judged. Now the Jewish custom is that Galatians chapter 4 is a whole, for the sake of time, because I want to get into something else. When a Jewish child becomes at the age of 12, he becomes now accepted as a child. But Galatians says, but while he's still a child, he, he's, like, he's almost like equal as a slave. But yet he's a child. But he had to wait until the appointed time set by the father. Now what happens is that that child on that day, the father comes in place and acknowledges that this is my child. And then the child acknowledges that that's my father. Then he, the moment he acknowledges, then he can enjoy what's already, even while he was a slave. That's why the prodigal son, Brother Harold, said, I'd rather go home because the slaves in my father's house is better than what? One of the things that I'm not going to go in, one of the, what is the currency of the kingdom? It is called faith. That's, faith is the currency of the kingdom. You have to believe that you are. And become fully persuaded that I am what the Bible says I am. The reason why we don't want to believe it because it means I must change my life. That's the only reason why we don't want to believe it. Then be like the person that looks into the mirror and says, "No, that can't be true. No ways, no ways, no ways, no ways." Pastor, then pray after we say because righteous. Ah, can you see my? Do not unrighteous goodness. Repent. Change your way of thinking and start to believe that you are. Even if you don't feel or do at this moment righteous thing, I am the righteousness of God. Sooner or later, the brain and link come with Alice and you start seeing. I begin it natural. Sister Julie, have you ever seen a cat try to be a dog? No. Can't bark. It's not his nature to bark. It is nature to what? To meow. Amen. That's what the Bible says, that you are a partaker of his divine nature. You are. Since when you were born, my name is can you see? Did you know that our environment changed? Where you grew up, grow up, determines how you're going to. I said to him, if I had to grow up, Tandu, if I had to grow up in Kailicha, I would most probably have spoken Koza. Because my environment determines. My culture, it's a culture. So where you grow up and how you grow up determines how you're going to be. Isn't that so? You behave what you see. That's why in the Cape place, everybody wants to be a gangster. Because we grew up. Because it's norm. The devil is a liar. That's not part of the colored culture that we are called and identified as gangsters. No, we are child, children of the most high God. Yes. Yes. Y'all know because, you know, the reason why there are so many gangsters is that because of this very absent fathers, a psychologist says that, well, you're looking at somebody that had an absent father and he could eat her dry against him. Did you know why? Because I discovered <laughs> that I'm a kingdom citizen. Yeah. That my father, my biological father, does not determine my life forward. Yeah. I discovered that he's the father yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> to 
to the fatherless. Mm. Because I realized that I was born from above. Although my parents, my mother gave birth to me, I was always on his mind. So then the child becomes and accepts that, yes, I am. That's my father. Then he starts to enjoy. Even while he was from birth, he was like a slave, but yet the Bible says he's an heir. Now the devil wants you to believe that you first have to. The only reason why you have to believe is so that it can manifest in your life. But that's who you are. That is what is yours. And the devil says you must do this and fast five tag done. And then God will move on your behalf. He already moved. We heard this morning. That what Brother Warren said. God, Pastor Dane said, He already moved. He's just waiting on us to move with him. I'm just checking quickly. What does it mean to be born again? It means to be born from above. That's simply what the word simply means. To be born from above. The reason why I'm pausing because there's, there's something that I want you to think about. I'm born from above. I'm born from God. I have the nature of God in my life. You don't have a devil's nature. Did they hear what I said? You don't have the devil's nature. You have God's nature in your life. So that's why I'm saying, so stop behaving. Like as if the devil is your father. For no one has said it. I think that Julie lag al voor die tijd al. And because you are born from God, you have the nature of God. And that's why Jesus Christ came into this world to show us who we are. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. Chapter 2, 1 John, 1 John. 1 John, 1 John. Ni Johannes, in Johannes. 1 John chapter 2. Verse 28. And now, dear children, continue in him so that when he appears, you may appear confidently and unashamed before him. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. Everybody that does right knows that he's born from God. Why do you want to do right? Because not because it's just the right thing. It's because you are born from God. And the reason why my life changed, why I started wanting to do the right thing, is because I realized where I come from. That's why I want to do the right thing. Because I realized that I am righteous. Amen? Amen. I, I, I see some of you are struggling to basically to accept night can you see? And that is and that is the problem with us. Is that we struggle to be able to believe that that's who we are. As I struggle. Yo, a sit, a sit, because I know the moment I know and believe. It mood change. That's why whenever you confess it, the devil will come and your challenge. Whenever you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, when you confess it, then all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Everything when you learn about the day when I accepted Jesus, when I accepted Him as my Lord, and believed that God raised Him from the dead to break all the laws. So I don't just die oh. But as I grew in the Word and grew and I realized, but I am. 
I can remember years ago, Brother Jeremiah, I was teaching on the, the, the word, the, the word, word, which one of the words is the word logos. I was a young man in God and village. I, I was teaching on a Bible, uh, a Bible study, a new convert's class. And as I was sharing, I said, what word comes from the word logos? It's the word logo. And I said to him, and the word became flesh. The logo Jesus Christ became flesh. And I said to him, if you see the golden arches, what do you see from far? It is McDonald's. It's the logo of McDonald's. And as I was sharing, I said with, so I said to him, but as Jesus is, so am I. So he says to me, all towards past, he come in with Bible class to me. I said, come in. I see, it is the logo of Jesus. And he lived, not wanting to believe that he is. Because he was looking at his experience and where he is at. Do you know how sad it was for me? The truth about his life should set him, was supposed to set him free. Do you know what, what happened to that young man? He ended up in drugs. Life messed up. Simply because he didn't want to believe that he is the logo of God. You and I are God's logo. When people look at us, they must supposed to see Jesus Christ. We represent him. And by the way, as in Christ culture, then you're also the logo of Christ culture. You represent the church. If we have copyrighted them, this is any brother Errol. But brother Errol will end up noch iets doen. To die Christ culture top on. And when he looked at the logo, to realize they, my ek is the logo van Christus. And they come net daar weer tot bekeering. He repented and he says, but it represent us. Christ culture. Can you mention us how to make the Christ culture t-shirts? Oh, there's a clump gangsters have an IK. I'm saying that to say to you that you are a logo of Christ. That's what Christ came to reveal. Christ was, Christ was, Jesus Christ was the logo of heaven. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. There's another thing that's in the kingdom. Every culture has a language. Is that right? Has a language. Every culture has a language. Why do they call them causas? Because they speak causas. Zulu is because they speak Zulu. Oswald Baiza. And I don't know what you're going to do. Look at Sister Tess with me. And I don't know what you're going to do, Sister. But that's not our culture. The devil is a learner. That the day must decide that in a trunk must have a new language come. And I'm a little now. But I don't know what you're going to do. The devil is a liar. Put the put the tattoo on you to say that there is whatever. No, that's not who you are. Six and twenty, eight and twenty. Witty what? All day, day, one and day, day. Witty what? That's not who you are. Jesus came to reveal to you that you are tattooed on the palm of His hands, and that when He looks at His hand, then see that tattoo, see that you look like old like Jeremiah, you look like old like Corin. Huh? See, the Bible says, he, no, he is yes. yeah. Amen. Amen. And I'm ending over that there's a language in the kingdom. Amen. And do you know what that language is? Love. Yes. Yes. Ah, let me, sister. Yes. Love is the language yes. of the kingdom of God. Love is the language of the kingdom of God. How will they know? John 13, verse 35. 
By this will all men know that we are his disciples. By this will all men know that we are kingdom citizens. Christ culture is when they see that we have love for each other. We can't sit in a same church and I can't sit in a red committee and a person man. Like give us sister Isa. Sorry, Isa. Isa, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, but I'm just saying that, man. But then we want to worship. He's my king. Oh, you are not off. As anybody's sister can live for a vision. John says, one John, he was the man of love. He says, how can you say you love God, but you hate your brother? I love you, Lord. But I think they're sister, Dungus and Bru, what feels, whatever. By this will all men know that we are his disciples. Jesus came to show us the language is to love. You must be able to love the worst person in your life. And it is impossible. But it's possible. I can hear a donkey say that by a school, live like a school family. Pastor, they first time my school, ma, my school, pa. Love them, love them. Why? Because you have the nature of God inside of you. Your Abba, where you are born from, is love. The Bible says, God is love. And because I'm born from Him, I am love. I can love. Pastor Tizen, if there's one thing I said one day, if, if I leave this earth, I want people want me to know that as a person that knows how to love. I had people that feel the drug feel, Sister Julie of the of Kom of the Khani. But then I realized that I messed up so many times, but yet he loves me. He loves me so much that he's totally forgotten about what I even did. His love is like a, a, a thing that wipes out everything. So you can't even go to God and say, he doesn't know what you're talking about. Love covers a multitude. And from all that, a multitude. Gehad. But the sister had not two or five good things done. And draw us, then we carry that person in our heart. Then we proclaim that we serve Jesus. Amen. Amen. The most beautiful thing is to see when people love each other. It's beautiful. I, I love romantic movies. I love romantic movies. <laughs> Do you know why? Is that at the end of the day, Pastor Dan, as when they by my car come. And they did, I soon, man. <laughs> Do you know why I want to worship? The word worship means to kiss. Oh, come on. So when I discover how much he loves me, I want to kiss him. I want to worship him. And I don't need to do anything for him to love me. He loves me. His mind is made up about how much he loves me. And we find in the body of Christ, same church, but I cannot get along with that person. It's sad. My desire is that everybody that is part of Christ's culture, 
will love each other and not get offended easily. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is the love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not rude. <laughs> so why do we want to be rude? It's not your nature. And the saddest thing is, and I'm finishing off, when we don't love, want to love somebody, then we make excuses why we cannot. There's no excuse why you cannot love your neighbor. That's why Jesus, the Samaritan, the good Samaritan story, and when, this guy, when, when Jesus asked this guy, um, he asked Jesus, what is the biggest commandment? You know, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your might and with everything that's within you and to love your neighbor as yourself. When God said that, he already knew what God was saying. So he wanted to check. Now, who is my neighbor? To my from Lord. Jesus says, okay, you want to know who's your neighbor? I'm going to tell you a story quickly. And after the story, we know how the there's a good Samaritan story work. And, uh, and, and Jesus asked him after the whole story, he said, do you understand now? He says, yes. And Jesus says, now go do likewise. Stop making excuses why you cannot love your neighbor. Love them. My wife has this thing one day, Pastor T, it, it's a good thing, it's a good thing, it's a good thing, it's a good thing, it's upset for you. I don't say don't get upset, but don't let it become bitter. She, will, she made them a nice supper and took it to them. Come on. Come on. You bless those that speak bad about you. Because then you eat the devil that he doesn't know where he comes. Do you know why? Because you come from another culture. You come from God. How will they know that you love each other? That you are part of Christ's culture? is when they see the love that we have for each other. Do you know that this week I shared, to, I shared with a couple of the guys and with Pastor Dan. This week, and I don't know whether the devil, devil knew what I was going to share, was, in my 59 years being on this earth, this week was the hardest ever. But do you know what was the, the, the comfort thing? Shoo! Sure. I know I have brothers and sisters that love me. That took me through. When we know that we have people that love you. Brother Henry said something yesterday. Don't, you don't have to do things on your own. There is people that will help you, man. I want to say your love carried me through. And the reason why I say that because it's part of Christ's culture's DNA. Come on. Amen. When you know there's people that love you. Because the Bible says, how is it possible that you love, you say you love one another and you see your brother struggling and you don't do anything about it. That's why Jesus came to show us what is his, heaven's culture. Heaven's language is love. For God so loved the world. Even the person that you don't like at this moment. God loves that person. 
So there's one thing that I want you to know that you are a kingdom citizen. Because that Jesus died and he rose again. You have a constitution. The problem is we don't read our constitution. That's why we don't know. Because when I read the constitution and I know the culture of Christ, then say Jesus, because he came to show me what the culture is, and Jesus says, if somebody <laughs> smacks you on the one cheek, you give the other one. <laughs> That's the kingdom. That's the culture. Nima, you can open green eyes as a tan for a tanting. Ugh for a ugh. Not even my foot yell. It trick no my bakir the bati. I will now show them my true colors. Yeah, show them their true colors. Your true colors is Christ. The other color is a foul color. Amen. Does those words sound familiar? I don't know if you are in the house. I don't know if you are in the house. Until I realize <laughs> that's not your culture, Alistair. Yeah, one guy in our church said this thing. Pastor, I know the Bible says, I have to go with one and I have to go with But the Bible says, I have to go with one. Because he wanted to make an excuse because he wanted to satisfy his flesh. When somebody hurts you and you love that person, it changes his whole life. Why, can this, why does this person love me? I've been so rude to him. I've done this and I've done that. And then afterwards he says, I want to serve the God that you serve. Because the Bible says it's the love of God that leads people to repentance. Father, I thank you this morning that you sent Jesus to show us what is the culture of heaven. Thank you, Abba, that you allowed us to become a to become everything that you want us to be, what you predestined us to be. Thank you for your love language, Lord. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent Jesus to die for us so that we can be saved from the lies of the pit of hell. Yes. Yes, Father, we will counter the culture of the world yes, by loving yes. our enemies. <laughs> Father, we will extend the culture of Christ showing the world that you love them. Father, now I pray for this audience what Paul prays in Ephesians. I pray, God, that you will give us a revelation of what is the height, what is the length, what is the depth, what is the width of the love that you have for us. But Father, like what the Amplified Bible says, I pray, O oh God, that we will practically experience that love. How much you love us. So that we can love each other with that same kind of love. About your word in Romans 5 verse 5 says that your love has been shed abroad in our hearts. Therefore, we can love. Father, help us. That wherever we go, that we reveal the culture of Christ. To forgive. Mm, thank you, Father. I'm going to share. Because I, 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 I feel this is what the Holy Spirit, while I was praying, was saying, when I said, thank you, Lord, that we will be able to forgive. I want to say to somebody here today, or if you're watching online, if you say that you are a child and believe that you're a child of God, you have to forgive. 
because your unforgiveness is stopping from what God wants to do in and through your life. Tony shared with us the testimony. There was a guy that hurt him big time. Big, big, big time. He was so hurt that he said, but you know what he listened to the spirit of God he went to that guy and settled the score love him that very same guy is now a blessing to him and his family let me tell you now I declare that when you go to your so called enemies you bless them they will become your blessing they will be the person that has the answer to what you need. But because you live in hatred, stop the blessing of God in your life. I don't know who that is. That's I said, that's was a life group. I'm telling you, I am. Tony will not go word you. But we spoke the word of God and said, this is the culture of Christ. We forgive. And if you want that to happen, you must do that because of who you are. Took him a little bit of time, but he went, Brother Harold. And now his whole family is enjoying. What I'm saying, and I heard the Spirit of the Lord is saying, when you do that, that decision influences your whole family. Amen. Not just you, your whole family will benefit from the. Who can us on the ice bring us? Can you meet me? So we're going to Mensen zijn nee, pas die alles gedaan hebben, Christ culture. No, we need to show them because we represent. I'm going to say that again. We represent Christ culture. People must want to come to Christ culture. Why? Because they see something in your life. Because your logo is love and grace. Oh, hallelujah! That's Christ culture culture. Love and grace. People think that stuff is just printed to look nice, Pastor Dan. That's the DNA. God has shown him your grace, so show it to others. God has shown you how much he loves you. Love others with that same love. Mensen gaan niet verkeerd op vreemd, but love them. En ik weet van jullie, ja, maar family is bij moeilijkste mensen om te liefde. Now love them. Show them that who you serve, who your true culture is. Amen. Christ came to show us that. So if you want to know the culture of Christ, read the Gospels. Read it. You'll be amazed what comes out of there, how Jesus treated people. Love is the language. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. You are a kingdom citizen start to believe it Amen. and the moment it resonates we will start to see the difference can I say something lastly brother Hell it was gesê ons moet altyd testify man it was for man gestogen for moon you know when I look at my our family since we came to Christ culture, we're different. Come on. No. Our finances has increased. Come on. Since we came here, triple. <laughs> okay, anyway. If you look at our children, if you look at our children, they, their lives has changed Come on. because of the culture of this church. So I'm glad to be part of this church. Come on. Amen. And like I myself and Pastor Dan was speaking on Thursday, a lot of my friends could not understand what, what I was doing here. But God knew why. And that the last thing I had in mind was this time to stand behind this pulpit. So I want to say to you, this is not just an ordinary church. 
There's a song that we used to sing years ago, and I think I sing it once here. I love this family of God. So closely knitted as one. I'm so glad that they've made me a part of their lives. Let us love each other, man. Let us look past those small things. Let us love each other, man. Somebody said to me, oh, when I came to Christ culture, yo, I get the love of the Lord for me. Now that's how we must feel. People must be able to feel that. But how will they know that? When they sing, no, but they live for me. Come on, come on. Can't you? Love is, love is contagious. And I know we all want to be loved. It's from us I live this. Because I want to be loved because it's the most beautiful thing. Then every until every comment says, "Give you so I can see you. You feel that love, huh, Sister Tess? Say so, Fro, but the love that Dirk is is hundred and fifty percent. You feel that love. Let us love each other. So if you are here this morning and you don't, or you didn't know before you came who you are." I'm here to tell you that you're a kingdom citizen. That's who you are. And the thing that you have to do is to believe it. That's the only thing. Amen. It's to believe it. That's how simple it is. You must believe that you are. Uh-huh. Then you will be Amen. what you are. Amen. Paul writes to the Galatians and says, when you believe that you're a child of God, you start to enjoy it. You are a child. Amen.